Hi, I'm Vivia Gugnani, and we're here at Artisanal, the mecca of all things cheese. So let's go behind the burner and meet the cheese enthusiast, expert, and author. I'm here at the Artisanal Cheese Center with the Dean of Curriculum and Metro Fromage, Max McCalman. We have a wide range of cheeses from mild to pungent from different regions across the world. What are we tasting now? Of these, I think that probably I would start off with this uh, Petite Montaille, this goat's milk cheese right mm -hmm. here, and uh, on this leaf. And so with this cheese, um, it's, uh, it's... It's beautiful because it's actually, the leaf is around Right, it's like the a little, little package. Uh, this is the way they used to do, uh, mm -hmm. treat a lot of cheeses. When, before they had paper in Europe, they would uh, sometimes just carry cheeses around on leaves or wrap the cheeses in leaves. And that way, a young, freshly made cheese, fairly wet, would have leaves so you weren't really touching the cheese. It also keep the pest off the cheese by That's having leaves on the outside. a good tip. So, when you taste cheese, mm -hmm. uh, use your nose, use your eyes, and uh, note the attack, the way you taste Beautiful wine. Beautiful fragrance. You can tell milky. immediately that it's you know kind of milky, it's mm -hmm. creamy. Goat's milk, very mild, but lovely. The you know, next cheese I think we should try in this, mm -hmm. in this group is sheep's milk. Mm -hmm. And one reason we would have a goat's milk cheese first is because goat's milk cheese are, most of them are a little bit lighter. And this is a uh, Pecorino uh, Balse Volterrane. And this is... Uh, Italian? Italian. Of uh, course. And uh, mm -hmm. Tuscan. It's a little bit cold and it's got a light fragrance to it. Mm. Goat cheese, I can smell the distinct goat sort mm. of mm -hmm. aroma. But and this that, is a that little... flavor is bigger though, right? It is. The flavor is definitely bigger. This type of cheese does pretty well with uh, with some fairly high acid white wines. Mm -hmm. It also does pretty well with some fruitier reds. Uh, this is uh, great with Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, it's a great breakfast cheese. And our very last one. Cabrales from northern Spain. Now take a little bit because this is like it looks. It's pretty, pretty, pretty intense. Very dark. And this is, and it's uh, got a very strong smell. So the uh, the blue has grown, and the blue in the cheese. These are the flowers in the cheese, and the flowers. Right. Are, have... So can you explain to me like what makes blue cheese blue? And this may be a very dumb question, but I've always wondered why is blue cheese blue? Well, the flowers, the strains of uh, penicillin, mm -hmm. and uh, in this case, it I'm is Roquefort. Okay. So, but different different strains of penicillin. Some people say I should not eat cheese because I'm, I'm allergic to penicillin. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, this is uh, this cheese just sucks the blue out of the air. This was a very educational and entertaining experience. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, hurry back and uh, now, like and we said. And come for a class. Yep. Get taught by Max at yep. um, Artisanal Cheese Center. Behind the Burner members can enjoy this special opportunity to purchase these fine cheeses at Artisanal. Stay tuned to Behind the Burner, where we give you the tips, tricks, and techniques that are lighting the culinary world on fire. <laughs>